Anyway, a lot of chatter here, Richard. Let's get right into it. What's your one big thing? It's um, the both of us are sort of cross marketing on our one big things. <clears throat> uh, this one is really it's a shorty. Uh, as hopefully some of our listeners, most of our listeners caught, um, Mansour Al Zahab and Zainab posted us. Costa Risalu. Yeah. Costa Costa Risalu. Yeah. Zainab Costa Risalu. Thank you, our, our linguist. Mm-hmm. Um, at uh, episode 108 uh, on the RIA, I mean, the regional headquarters program. It was an awesome one. And anyway, so it, we had a little note recently. And I saw so it basically in an interview with Bloomberg. Uh, Minister of Investment Khaled Al-Fala commented that Saudi Arabia has outperformed its target for attracting regional headquarters with over 180 companies now established in the kingdom. This number surpasses the initial goal of securing 160 HQs by the end of 2023. Al-Fala added that, quote, the rate is picking up to the tune of 10 companies per week that are being licensed in Saudi Arabia, and they are being provided with a good set of incentives, unquote. It is interesting, Lucian. Folks, we talked to as this last sprint, you know, to to January 2024, where people are trying to get under the wire or, or understand what the requirements are, what the package they're going to get. Um, but Alfala emphasized that the regional HQ program is part of a quote long term journey unquote, adding that the kingdom is working with international entities to create the, the right ecosystem to open offices in Saudi Arabia. Some of the noted companies that open their regional headquarters in Saudi Arabia in recent months are uh, PwC Middle East and GE Healthcare. He added that Kingdom has a friendly and stable jurisdiction for international investors at a time of geopolitical tensions and economic headwinds. I think this is interesting because he's essentially putting out Saudi Arabia as a stable haven, you know, an island. Uh, And he, this is further to that quote, uh, Quote, beyond the current situation in Europe and the Middle East, people will look around and find Saudi Arabia is the best destination to invest in. It is happening now, and we believe we will transition through the set of crises going on now, and Saudi Arabia will continue to be a very attractive destination for investment, unquote. Um, I thought this was interesting because one of the things we talked about when we talked to Mansour and Zainab was the, the RHQ was first mooted in 2019. The sort of details first came out in February 2021. And you recall, there was a lot of consternation. You know, this is, you know, this is a broadside to the Emirates. And, and what are the details? What does it mean? So it's, it's encouraging. And it's also a little bit trend-like in that Saudi Arabia, like the tourism numbers and other things, are, are, are overshooting the numbers. You know, they, they were looking for 160. They're at 180. They'll probably be at 200 when the, when the, you know, January 1st gets here, there'll be others getting under the wire. But uh, this is really important in terms of their interest in becoming a, you know, a a center of business. And, uh, you know, these regional HQs are in place because they want to be jobs generators. They want to be talent attractors. Um, And they're getting together a nice critical mass of, significant players, significant multinational corporations that have decided, okay, we'll make this leap. And they've done it, you know, they've offered incentives and that sort of thing. So one of the interesting things about it is, so for example, and I think there's probably a whole slew, when somebody goes in to negotiate, there's probably a whole slew of of possible incentives. I mean, at least two known ones uh, is that um, you can be exempt from Saudiization. And I, you know, there'll be refinements of this, but in terms of doing business, you you obviously want to want to Saudi eyes. You want locals, but you know, if you can do that organically and not by mandate, that's a terrific advantage. You know, there's also in terms of attracting people, is that um, you can get uh, you know premium residency status for executives, another big bonus. So I think there's. You know, they put out a lot of incentives, but we're seeing, and, and that's why this Khaled Al-Fala comment was, was notable, we're seeing that, A, the decision, the, the, the proposal was feasible, and B, it's resulted in a really nice return 
in terms of people making the commitment to come to Riyadh and all the good things that ensue from this decision to come to Riyadh and set up their headquarters. So that's my one big thing, short but sweet. And it's a good one. It's a big thing going on in Saudi Arabia right now. And, you know, it's interesting because it's not really surprising, at least for me, Richard, and I won't speak for you, but it's not really surprising that it's having a very positive effect because it if you're looking, if you're the Saudi government, if you're authorities in Saudi Arabia, you're saying, why are we giving away this, these government contracts that are extremely, tremendously lucrative to organizations that are based in Dubai and are hiring people in Dubai that are taking that flight over? And I've done it a few times in the past few months where you're leaving Saudi Arabia Thursday evening and you're getting on the flight to Dubai. And I just happen to be on that flight and it's all dudes in westernized suits going home for the weekend. It's like Saudi Arabia does not want that and they don't want these government contracts to go to companies that are doing that. So for Saudi Arabia, it makes a lot of sense. For the companies, it makes a lot of sense because we're talking about a lot of money. We're talking about government contracts that are lucrative, that are huge. So they're going to go where the money is. And you know the quality of life issues that people questioned at the beginning, oh, well, is it going to be as good as living in Dubai or is it going to be as good as living somewhere else? And you know, as in Riyadh, well, Saudi Arabia is working on that. They're I mean, there's so much more to do in Saudi Arabia. There's so many places to eat. There's it, the quality of life is improving every day. Schools are improving every day. But, you know, have they caught up to Dubai? I know. But if you're the corporation, you're going to say, hey, guys, like we this is you have a job because this is we're working on this contract. And honestly, it also saves us money and time and productivity. You guys are going to be where you are working on this contract in Saudi Arabia. So it makes sense from both sides. You know, and if you take away the, oh, can Saudi compete with, you know, Dubai? And remember, we asked um, Zainab and Mansoor about this. And, you know, what is what is the UAE's response? Like, what is their retort? Are they going to do the same thing? And they essentially said, well, they don't have the same priorities that Saudi Arabia has right now. Saudi Arabia has to get these companies to be based there, not because they want, you know, they want to prove a point or they want to one up Dubai, but because of the trickle down effects that you just talked about, there are enormous for Saudi Arabia. And it's all part of this holistic approach to improving the business climate in the kingdom and allowing preventing, I should say, money and talent from spilling over its borders every weekend. And, you know, at the end of the year, they want people living there and working there. So it's a really important topic. It's a, it's a good one, big thing. And I like your, the way you, you couch that. And you sort of holistic and it's good for everybody. I sort of see it as a virtuous cycle in the sense that Saudi Arabia put it out there. And then the, the, the pushback is, well, you know, what about restaurants, schools, blah, 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 all the things that make our life, quality of life really attractive in the Emirates. And so in order to support the regional age coup, and I'm not saying they, you know, it was the result of it, but you can see it working in tandem. Then they go about, oh, I, you know, they've been promoting restaurants, entertainment working on schools, you know, simple things like premium residencies, like being able to use your international driver's license for the first year, you know, easy, any, all these things that they're going, okay, if we want regional HQ to be success, which we do, we need to eliminate some of these sort of perhaps seemingly minor, but real obstacles to people's quality of life and making the decision to come here and bring their families. So you get a, you get a nice push pull. I mm-hmm. think, and I think one of the things that Saudi has done a good job almost in every one of their um, initiatives, as far as I can tell, is is they've taken feedback and they've adapted regula- regulations and requirements uh, based on good quality feedback. And, and so, anyway, I, I think it's it's I think your your term is good um, in terms of both sides winning, and I, I think it's especially good from Saudi because it does create a virtuous cycle where you put it out there and then you make the changes to make it happen, which is all good on both ends. Absolutely. And the Saudi Arabia of 2023, soon to be 2024, is very different than the Saudi Arabia of 2019 when this was announced. I think it was 2019 or 2018. It was, it was his first move to 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's four years of difference. And, you know, Saudi Arabia isn't making the quality of life better for this program. They're making the quality of life better because it's part of Vision 2030, just like this program is. So, like I said, holistic kind of just it's it's part of this development. I mean, people may say, well, I still prefer to live in Dubai, but yeah, it's still a lot better in Saudi Arabia today than it was a few years ago. And now it's becoming more of a serious, real decision. And if 
if your job is in Saudi Arabia and it has to be in Saudi Arabia, there, there it is. The decision's made and the benefit for Saudi Arabia on that is huge. So 